Hello and welcome to the Jewelers Academy podcast. My name is Kim Thompson and this week I'm really excited to be talking to Katie Tovey Grinley of Business Wonderland. Katie is a social media and marketing coach and consultant helping service-based business owners bring joy to social media and content creation. Hi Katie, thank you for joining me. Hi Kim, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. You, it was a pleasure to see you because I've not seen you for many many years but you did back in the day help me out with um one of my dogs and then when we were looking for a second dog I came and visited you to see a little um one that you were fostering at the time yeah a big change since all that which is what I'd like to talk about today yeah I can't wait I'm excited oh brilliant well if we jump straight into the questions so you might want to start a little bit before where I've um, placed the first question. That's completely up to you because I know that your story started before this point. But in terms of for our listeners and our watchers, could you tell us a little about, bit about your self-employed business journey and when and why you decided to reframe those skills by offering support and coaching to other service-based small businesses? Because you started off, like many of us, as a self-employed service-based business and you've grown from there haven't you and changed tack a little bit yeah so my businesses have definitely evolved since I first started so I started my first business in 2011 and I was a service-based business owner providing you know a local audience dog walking and home boarding and I was able to really utilize social media so I was able to grow that business really fast and I'm one of these people that love to talk to other people, to network, to make connections. You know, I'm like, hey, you should go and talk to so-and-so. So I really embraced, you know, being friends with other local dog walkers and home boarders in the area where a lot of people would see them as competition. I wanted to be friends with them. And that kind of evolved because people were then asking me how to use social media and Instagram was very, very new. Like no one was really using it. Everyone was using Facebook and Twitter at this time. And so I decided that, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll help my friends with their businesses. And, you know, I would be paid in a barbecue or a couple of wines at the pub, which was great. And I kind of did that for a few years and I was having a conversation with a, another friend in business and I really saw that there was this huge gap in the market for actually, you know, marketing yourself as a pet business owner, because I think a lot of people go into that industry because of their love for animals. They, they are very passionate about animals and, you know, they want to do the best by them and they don't really then you know, want to put the spotlight on themselves and promote themselves. So that's how I really started then teaching other people social media. And I built like this huge community on Twitter for pet business owners all, you know, across the globe, which was amazing. And then I kind of realized that I just didn't want to help people in that niche. I wanted to help anyone like with a service based business get really confident with promoting and selling themselves on online. So that's been my very unique journey. I'm really interested in what you're saying about how um, you loved signposting and, and talking about other people. Um, Cause one of the big ethoses with the Jewelers Academy is community over competition. Um, but equally, I know from my own experiences, I've been told on multiple times that I'm crazy like what are you doing why are you you know doing either giving this small thing away for free or why are you signposting to these other people they're your competition what are you thinking about did you have similar com sort of conversations with people initially did people think it was a bit strange that you weren't um like gatekeeping your connections and your area um, I don't think I did actually I think <laughs> I think because people were just so you know, pleased that I was like, do you know what, I can't help you, but I know this absolutely brilliant person that could help you. Or like they were talking about something completely different. And I was like, do you know what, I know just the person that can help you. Like to, to me, like I just thought I was doing like the best service and just 
you know being the best possible person that I could be so yeah I I don't think I ever had any backlash about doing that actually but you're right I always think it makes you look like a trustworthy person because not only are you being honest you're being generous with your knowledge even when yeah. people are paying you for it yeah absolutely right well um, one of the reasons I asked you on the podcast is because I know that recently you've been sharing a lot of posts about authenticity on your social media channels. Um, social media is, as you know, saturated with people who say that they are business coaches and they've got these growth programs and all this stuff going on. And authenticity has been one of the big, big buzzwords of the past few years. Um, but can you tell our listeners and watchers how your meaning of that word is and how it shows up in your own business is significantly different to that sort of cookie cutter approach we see a lot of online and the understanding that some people have of that word? Yes. Yeah, so I think for me, being authentic is slightly different because I'm neurodiverse, so I have dyslexia and ADHD. For me, it was kind of removing that mask of the person that I thought I had to be to show up. And as neurodivergent people, I like to call us neurosparkly, um, we, we wear lots of different masks dependent on who we're with, what type of situation we are in. And I soon realized that I was being a different person on calls with, you know, with my clients and my community to how I was showing up online and I feel like that was really like harming my business because actually people were coming on the calls and like really enjoying you know my energy and what I had to say and I was not really showing that to yeah I guess my full potential so for me it was just re removing that mask and being okay with being myself and whether I came under judgment, you know, and I think, I think actually we judge ourselves more than anyone else will judge us. So I had to really get over that and kind of for me, like, okay, what's the worst case scenario? Someone leaves a, you know, a horrible remark. Well, actually I've already had those. So do you know what I mean? It, it it's worth just allowing to be me and yeah just really I guess removing that mask and I think kind of like what you were saying before as well Kim like helping other people and connecting with other people I feel like that is a really authentic thing to do it's something that I would do if a friend was asking for a recommendation of someone and you know I can say yeah I've you know I've been to see this lovely person and you know they were really great or actually this person's had recommendations so it's kind of like why wouldn't I do that in a really authentic way for my business because that's exactly what I would do <laughs> in real life and I think a lot of these people as well who you know were saying be authentic m you know still might be hiding part of themselves because they feel like they have to show up in a particular way and I'm very much actually like the reason why we struggle with say like marketing with social media is because we're trying to be someone that we're not. And actually, if we just showed up in a way that works for us, our businesses would just grow so much quicker. 100%. And also similar to what you were saying about, you know, the signposting. Similar to yourself, when I first started using Instagram, properly for my business and I just um come into my shed to start teaching from there and I got it into my head that it had to be this pristine insta bright you know not a thing out of place and it's exhausting trying to be something that you're not is absolutely exhausting and then trying to make content based around that is exhausting because that's when you have to really plan or really stage things because it's not the reality of what's actually happening but if you can lean into yourself and your own personality and be truer about the reality of things everybody suits different personalities so coming back to that signposting thing that yes you and yes i might not be the right person for 
you know, a certain personality type and a certain person with certain aims. But there's plenty of people out there who would gravitate towards that personality type. And if you're seeing different personality types online, rather than everybody rigidly sticking to the same sort of format and, you know, generic professional um, appearance, it gives people choice. Because I don't know about you from a coaching standpoint, but I know from a teaching standpoint, again, for a long time, it took me a while to get out of my head. Why are people paying good money to come to my tiny little shed? But a lot of the feedback I was getting was that actually these very white, bright, not a thing out of place, professional looking studios were intimidating to a lot of people. And I would imagine it could be the same with coaching, that if everything's very rigid and very, very professional and slick, that could be very intimidating to some people. Yeah, definitely. I know I've been put off from working with people or buying from people because they've got such a pristine, like, you know, Instagram appearance and yeah they own you know maybe they don't drink water they only drink champagne and you know most of the time i'm you know covered in dog hair and you know my my hair is getting bigger and bigger throughout the day because of the humidity <laughs> don't even when i laminate handouts for the studio half of them have got dog hair laminated <laughs> and i try and be so careful <laughs> everywhere <laughs> everywhere yes so i i would rather and i say as well like so i have my own podcast and like my intro post was you know what i want to achieve and i was like and by the way i have three dogs i'm recording my podcast at home so they may join in at any time and i'm not going to edit them out quite rightly yeah yeah. <laughs> it makes you human it, I always think stuff like that it builds a connection as well it makes you appear sounds like the wrong word but it makes you seem like a real person again rather than just somebody in a you know a very slick office that's drinking champagne all day yeah I feel like that's a really high standard to to maintain and I absolutely 100% wouldn't be able to maintain that and anyone who can i mean fair play to you because that's just yeah that's not me that's not my personality yeah and like i say i always think it's it be exhausting to try and be anything but yourself but it's so much easier when you're just being authentic <laughs> in in the real sense of the word rather than sort of the sense that's maybe been doing the rounds the last sort of four or five years or so yeah definitely and i always think as well like when you share content from your point of view or from your opinions your beliefs then no one else can really copy that because you are so ingrained and intertwined into that content just the way maybe you filmed it or how you've appeared on camera or the way that you know you've written the caption and that actually will help you stand out more online rather than thinking that you know you've got to be this you know beige version of yourself coming back to um dyslexia so I did a load of videos with Kono Craft and initially when Hannah was editing them for me because the, the way it ran I would post on my social media you know accounts as and when but I knew there'd be no way that I would manage to then log them so that people could easily come back to things and you know make them logical from that sense so that was her job and she would regularly message me at the beginning and say just to let you know you spelt this wrong the grammar there not quite correct you might want to change this you might want to change that and my response pretty much from day dot was if if i haven't accidentally written something absolutely ridiculous or offensive if it is just a normal typo i'm not changing it coming back to the time because if i spent the time worrying about that sort of thing actually i wouldn't get a fraction of the amount of work done and also it's me, you know, I do, you know, my spelling isn't the greatest, but as long as it's legible and as long as people understand what it says, then it's like, well, fine. Yeah. I mean, I miss words out all the times and I get letters mixed up. So like B's and P's. Um, and yeah, I, unless it's really not obvious, I, I just go with it now. 
I just think, well, this is what you're letting yourself in for <laughs> if you also, come and follow me. <laughs> certain things, if it's print media or if it's your website and something that's going to be more static, yes. then it's me taking the time and making the extra effort. But when yes. it's more organic with a higher turnover like social media, I always think just, <laughs> just accept it, lean into it. Yeah for sure yeah i'm with you print media your website yeah i feel like th that has to be a much higher standard but yeah social media it's kind of like or you know like my email newsletter and the thing is i could reread that a hundred times and i still wouldn't spot yeah, mistakes yeah. i'm exactly the same because it, it's like with a lot of neurodiversity often it's not for a lack of trying <laughs> and so yeah and more often than not people who are neurodiverse are actually working a lot harder and expelling a lot more energy to try and you know get on a level playing field in that way but it's still very very easy to miss things even when you've read them multiple times. yeah i guarantee that i have read my email like newsletter draft a, a lot more than a neurotypical person has and you know maybe a neurotypical person has spotted that but i i will never yeah spot it and i do feel even if i'm putting out instagram captions i'm you know i it's not like i just post them out thinking all oh, that will do i have gone over it several times and i might only spot it like 10 minutes after i've posted it sometimes i will edit it and sometimes i'll just think oh do you know what let's just go with it yeah, exactly the same. Exactly. Um, so question three. We're talking about service based businesses, but many self employed jewelry makers consider themselves product based businesses, which is, you know, obviously understandable, they're selling products. Um, but I always feel that many of them would benefit from considering themselves more as a service based business. Obviously, there's the the more obvious services like running workshops and stuff but even if you're not doing that people are often offering a repairs service a commissions service um ring sizing general advice just taking away the problem of people having to find lovely gifts for people um and also as we all know we've lost so many of our high street shops and in part i always feel that's because they weren't offering a personal service anymore and then when things are more you know cheaper or more convenient to buy online so many people go online but as self-employed business owners we are able to offer that personalized level service um and that could be advice around what jewelry people could purchase how to care for it it could be private commissions it could be running the workshops and do you feel authenticity is more important for people to who wish to offer services and if you do why do you feel that it's more important when it's a service and not a product? So just go into what you were saying about, yeah, jewellery businesses being product and actually service base. I, I do agree. Like, I think jewellery based, you know, business owners actually do provide a lot of services. And I think as well, it's kind of like you forget how much information that you will know about jewellery that the average person like me does not know. And I think it's very easy to dismiss that knowledge and actually realize how helpful it is for someone like me to have. And I think back to like the last couple of pieces of jewelry that I have bought from independent jewelry owners. I went in, you know, with a very clear idea in my head, like, you know, this is the pair of earrings that I'm looking for. And actually the, the person serving with me was like, do you know what? I know exactly what you want. I know exactly what you're looking for. Let me grab some bits for you. And you know, you can have a look. And he, you know, he brought out a pair of earrings and if I had seen them, like, you know, in, in the counter, I would never have picked them out. But, um, he was like, I think this would look really great with your eyes, with your skin tone incredible salesperson by the way uh, <laughs> and I was like oh my goodness this is actually what I do want and I thought I thought I knew what I wanted but I didn't and it's just kind of like if I had just walked into a jewelry shop and said you know these are the pair of earrings and they had just gone oh there you go I would have 
walked out with a completely pair, you know, different pair of earrings and maybe a pair that actually I didn't even really like wanted, like, you know, so I feel like that is so important, even with really understanding your customer as well, when someone walks in and they're describing, you know, what they want the piece of jewelry for. Yeah, you, you, you guys know all of that, like, you know, us better than we know ourselves most of the time. <laughs> And you're able to give such great advice and that's really helpful and that is providing an amazing service you're right i say to the students all the time that we really take for granted what's in our heads and what we are seeing all the time if you think about social media and algorithms that is not the same as what the majority of the general public are seeing so for example a lot of people get themselves very stress because they feel that everything they need to make should be unique because they feel that the market is saturated and you have to make you know these really unusual outstanding pieces and it's always great to strive to be unique it's always great to strive to find your voice obviously but what they're not taking into account there's certain things like classic stacker rings plainer wedding bands you know simple studs things like that that we feel are saturated and everyone's done them a million times before but the customers are not seeing that same amount they're not flooded with that same amount of jewelry <laughs> no about is that you've got something that suits their needs and like you said most customers don't have a clue around necessarily the longevity of certain styles of jewelry and if there's gemstones involved what you can and can't do with them because everybody wants to jump in the hot tub wearing the jewelry yeah yeah, all, all these things. Yeah, like for that's a really good example because I thought when I got engaged, I wanted a pearl engagement ring. I'm obsessed with pearls. And the person in the shop was like, do you know, you'll have to take your ring off every time you wash your hands. And I was like, oh, right, well, that is not going to happen. But again, like that person could have just gone, yeah, here, here are all the, you know, pearl rings that we've got, like pick one. Whereas I was given that service and, you know, they, they told me that. And as well, like going back to the service that I received, I would go back to the shop where I bought my earrings from. And I'm not, I don't really care like whether they're unique pieces or, you know, I could buy them in a hundred other places. What I would go back to is because they provided me with incredible service and I want to support them. And then I know that I'm going to receive the best kind of service that I can possibly get. Yeah, 100%. But more often than not, to offer that sort of service, people have to actually show up for the business, like physically show themselves. <laughs> um, they don't always have to, but it really does make a difference in terms of realising that it is a person that's running the company. And more often than not, it is a person who's making the jewellery because I don't know what you find. I find you could write whatever you want and you can be as clear and as, you know, even, you know, bullet points and you can't get any clear about it. And people do, it's, sometimes they don't read, but more often than not, I think they just don't process and they don't quite understand and even when it is handmade and you are able to offer that level of service, people just presume it's a bigger company and things are being turned out and, and those sort of options aren't available. So, for example, um, one of my past students who also did the Silver Diploma, I interviewed her for a podcast yesterday and she makes everything herself by hand. And recently she was doing the the great brand exchange in John Lewis so she stood there with all her work and all the signage saying that she's a small business and she's literally stood there and there's video content of her physically making the stuff and every, loads of people coming up thought she worked at John Lewis <laughs> it's mass produced so we do sometimes have to um go above and beyond it showing that no it, it is us so question four, many of us are nervous or downright terrified of showing up online. This may be showing our faces in our business in general. It could be talking to camera, which is often the thing, or even just sharing a little bit of your personality and how you write and communicate with customers. Because a lot of people, again, feel that they have to be very professional and not sort of share anything or they're worried that they'll share too much. 
Um, people are often really scared about saying the wrong thing or coming across as unprofessional because of it. What do you feel it's important to show up? I presume that you do and promote with your authentic self. And do you have any advice about striking that balance between authenticity and professions? Yeah, so I think you can show up however you want to show up. And I feel that's really important. And, you know, you could, it, I guess as well, it depends like who you want to attract. So for example, like if you want to get your jewelry in Selfridges or Harrods, then you, you know, you are going to have to show up in a very particular way. But if you're maybe wanting to, you know, um, just have your own website or maybe you know your stock is is more for like an alternative um client base so maybe you want to get into some shops you know maybe in glastonbury you know it's it's that sort of vibe then your vibe is going to be very very different and i think that also depends on you so yeah how how do you want to show up who do you actually want to attract and I think there's no wrong or right answer, only you know that. And I think you can then show up what feels like really good for you. Like I, if I was making jewelry, I would probably, you know, be more along the glass and brie line rather than like, you know, trying to fit into Harrods and Selfridges because that that's not my personality. The more, you know, like anything goes sort of vibe is, is my, and I think, yeah it's kind of important that you're showing up as as yourself and as well it's like how how do you want your clients to feel when they when they come and visit you on social media your website you know do you want to give them you know a big hug and like welcome them in or you know do you do you want to offer this very bespoke kind of service and I think how you show up, how you behave will vary, you know, depending on who, who you want to attract. But it does get easier the more you do as well. And I think it, it's OK not to be perfect when you're showing up. If I go back and look at my very first, you know, few months of being a business owner, I would cringe at what I've posted like absolute cringe and there's no way that I would post that today and that's okay because I've involved as a business owner and that's just what we do we're all you know moving forward every single day and actually maybe what you post today isn't what you would have posted even six months ago and that's absolutely okay that's just part of growing as a business owner and yeah, probably if I looked back on my Instagram account, even six months ago, something that I've said, I wouldn't necessarily agree with now. But yeah, it just takes a, a lot of practice. And I would say, don't try to be perfect and just have, have this mindset that we are always like growing and moving forward and just, you know, striving to improve every single day. I remember when I was doing the free videos i mean my partner is a professional film editor but if i got him to film stuff for me it would end in four which is not gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> um, so even though i had access to all the professional equipment and i had you know a professional in the house all the videos that i did i just did them on my mobile phone and quite often because the mobile phone is just propped up on something because you know i had all the different holders and devices but none of them were ever quite right so more often than not i just had the phone propped up and then you start hammering or doing something of course the phone would fall over or i'd film myself and i've dropped something and then i'm just you know diving under the desk to get it and then coming back to the amount of energy it would have taken me for me to have kept re-recording or you know spending more time on that it wasn't going to happen it was either it is what it is or I'm not doing it but again a lot of the feedback was that people that's why people liked it because it was more human it was more natural and then they felt better about themselves when they dropped things and that they felt that well then it's okay because she's dropping something but she's doing it on camera and putting it out there um 
but I know with with your post with authenticity, one of the things that could help, I suppose, when people are worried about being themselves more and using, you know, their natural tone and way of speaking is if they planned it meticulously, because then they can check it. But for a lot of people with ADHD, um, it's not that they can't plan. Of course, we can, you know, we can plan. But exactly like you just said, you might end up spending ages, way more time than other people planning things and then it's almost like our brains move so fast we're then beyond that quite quickly and our focus has shifted and we're no longer that interested in sharing the things that we've maybe planned and it's not relevant anymore or something's changed so again in terms of your business or what you share with people um is it all about you know plan your next six months plan your next year or are you more organic with it how does it work um if i so i always have a strategy so i know exactly like what i want my content to be doing i know what i'm working towards but if someone said to me plan out a month's worth of content well first of all i would have a bit of a panic attack because i couldn't sit down long enough to be able to do that and just like you said kim by the time it came round to posting, you know, something, say week three of the month, I wouldn't be interested in it anymore. I wouldn't want to post that. So it would be a complete and utter waste of time for me to, you know, plan a month in advance. So I always do a week in advance and then I find that I don't get bored. I, you know, I haven't up leveled my messaging or my mindset in that very short amount of time and i still feel really passionate about it as well which is really important for me but it, in the same um time you post regularly and it's all consistent in terms of you know it all makes sense yes as, as one so it's not as if you're just erratically posting and things are just just jointed so do you think is that again about leaning into yourself and if you're more authentic to yourself and you're being true to yourself then in theory whatever you post it should be connected and make sense yeah I think for me it's not just like throwing something up on social media and then going right tick that I've done that I've put something on social media okay what's what's next it is thought out in terms of like I you know I I want it to help talk about you know a program that i'm going to launch or about my membership so it's not kind of just posting very erratic things like one one day i'm posting about how to build a community and then the next day it's like oh this is what you need to include in your instagram bio because that's you know very like mixed messaging um so maybe like if you've got a new collection that you're you know you want to promote then you could you know talk about that really for like i mean you can create so many posts about that so like you know why you decided you to create this collection you know the the story behind it behind the scenes and then like that's like there's so much before you even start to share the pieces that you've even created so you you don't have to stick to like oh well day one it's this day two it's that it's kind of be like okay actually what's going to be interesting and helpful for people to know before i launch this collection of jewelry and i know in speaking to a lot of people they then worry that they're almost spamming people but coming back to the algorithms again it's trying to explain to them where actually most people will only be seeing one or two of those posts and then if that captures their interest then they can go back to your main profile and look at the other post but certainly for most people it's not that they're going to see every single thing that you posted and feel that they're, they're receiving too much information from you which is what people worry about yeah and i think as well like if someone's followed your account they followed it for a reason they want to see your work and sometimes like i follow quite a lot of jewelry pages on Facebook and Instagram because I absolutely love jewelry um so I love looking at all the pretty things so very often like if I see um a you know a jewelry maker pop up on my Facebook and I was like oh I haven't seen them in a while I'll literally go back and binge all of their content that I've missed and that brings me so much joy because I get to see all of the lovely things that they've created what they've been up to so 
yeah I think as well like don't be frightened that you're boring people people are following you for a reason they they want to know you know what you're up to what you're creating and yeah they just you know won't see you know every single post that you put out either no and I can never remember what the, the phrase or this this is is but you know that thing about people have to see things so many times before they will actually make that connection or buy into you in some way yeah it's between seven and eight times they have to see something from you before they trust you enough to purchase from you but so many of us think that we just do the thing once <laughs> and that's enough and that you know it's out there and that in theory people should then know about it but it's just not how it works no no because we think they're only seeing our content and for example on instagram there's 95 million posts every day on instagram so and like most of us don't go on instagram just once a day like we go on a few times so just think of all the content think of all the businesses that we're seeing or the content we're consuming so actually if we see your post in the morning and we might think oh do you know what i might go and have a look at that later or you know once you know i'm you know someone might be like once i'm home from work and then they they forget because obviously a million things have happened since being on instagram in the morning so yeah we we do have to repeat ourselves a lot and i always think if you're fed up of repeating yourself you're you've almost done it enough you need to do it that little bit more first thing i teach full time what i do is i run workshops and everyone always comments about um how busy I am because I post you know most days not at the minute because I've been uber uber busy um but the reason I'm able to do that is because I literally sort of post in the moment while it's fresh and that's one thing so it is sort of the reality of what happens to to be happening um but equally even then like people who know me quite well or people who have followed me for years or even you know friends and family will regularly say oh can I buy that thing that you made and it's like but all my posts are such and such was in the studio today and they made <laughs> that they yeah. play with but even then when you know for you know 20 years that's pretty much all I've been doing people still think they just see the picture and they think oh she makes these things and it, and it doesn't sink in and then even at that extent that's when it's like oh my god you have to be so much clearer and you have to repeat yourself way more than you think you do with whatever the core messaging is that you want people to know because it just doesn't sink in well, yeah yeah i i know someone who um makes like a lot of engagement rings and of course they will post the engagement ring once it's been used to propose <laughs> and there's always comments like is this still available is like how do i buy it and it's like no this ship has sailed this is on <laughs> someone's finger who has said yes <laughs> yeah and like she's really clear like you know if you want a bespoke you know engagement ring or uh, a, a bespoke piece of jewelry then get in touch it's really clear like on a caption but people just see the you know the photo and be like how can i buy it they're just like straight into the comments which i mean is great it's a great problem to have but yeah <laughs> it always cracks me up i can never get over it <laughs> Um, circling back to the the showing up online a little minute, um, because I know you've been doing it for a while, but can you remember? Did it come naturally to you, or were you scared when you first started doing it? And either way, why did you decide to be more visual for your business? I can remember the first video that I ever did, and I thought I was going to be sick for about two days. Is that before or after filming it? After filming it. Yeah, I had the courage enough to film what I needed to film. And I posted it pretty much straight away and literally, yeah, for about 48 hours, I felt like I was going to be sick. Like it was awful. What pushed you to do it when it really didn't come naturally? What, what forced you to get over that fear? Because I wanted a deeper connection with my community. So I had only ever shared like photos or graphics and I really wanted to be able to get my personality across to people and I knew 
like video was the way to do it uh, obviously this is before like instagram reels and TikTok and things like that so it was very much like you know recording a proper video and yeah it was so nerve-wracking and yeah i can remember posting it and it, it like did okay like it got some you know traction comments wasn't like it didn't blow up or anything do you know what i mean but i was just like well it's always going to be easier than than this and you know maybe next time i'll only feel sick for 24 hours and not 48 hours <laughs> And I can remember the first time like I went live on my Facebook page and oh my gosh, like I think I looked quite calm and like, you know, put together, but oh my goodness, like I was sweating so much. But do people just presume that you found it really easy, you think? I think so, maybe, but then I have been doing it for so long now, like I don't even like think oh, i'll just be like oh do you know what? i've got quite a lot to say today i'm gonna go live and i'll just go live straight away but like you said that's because of practice yes years of practice yeah i there's i often get asked by people about for example say they need to promote something or you know something's happening and then i'll sort of say well, well you could do this you could do that and then quite often the comments are yeah but it's all right for you <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it's all right for me and they go well yeah but you you're always taking you know sharing photos and on camera and doing all this stuff and it's like well yes I am now but actually that doesn't mean that it came natural and I kind of <laughs> I don't want to say I got tricked I didn't get tricked into it but it, it came across through a misunderstanding um so when I did this year's uh, worth of free tutorials with Kerner Craft I had it in my head that we were going to do still photography step-by-step -step guide sort of thing and there was a miscommunication and they thought I was going to do filmed <laughs> tutorials and before we realized there was a miscommunication it had sort of been semi-announced <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> I had this moment of you know obviously obviously I could have clarified and pulled out but similar to yourself I made that call in that moment it's like I really really don't want to do this but equally it would work a lot better that way you know, it would be a lot more useful for people viewing that way. It's probably quite an important thing to do. Yeah. I'm just going to have to grip my teeth and try. And then coming back to, you know, the phone falling over and you learn on the hop more often than not, because the only way to learn how to do that stuff is to practice. Um, but certainly, like, I'm not an extrovert. I'm quite an introverted person, naturally, but you just practice and one of the things that I've said to a few people is if they feel that they want to show up more online um, and they are terrified of it which is natural especially when it's new one of the things you can do is record yourself every morning or every day on your phone talking to the camera but you don't need to share it anywhere you don't need to do anything with it it's just to get used to the process of talking to a screen yeah comfortable and on instagram there is a feature where you can go live but there's a practice function yeah because even i can't think of anything worse than going live on instagram <laughs> <laughs> yeah whereas like to me it's yeah it's 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 fine if someone says to me do you want to come on an instagram live with me i'd be like yeah <laughs> i wouldn't even like second get like second think it i'd be like yeah that sounds like fun let's do it <laughs> I'm always fine with stuff like that if the other person is running it and I'm answering questions like I can answer things in real time but the idea of um having some sort of pre-prepared speech or thing that I've got to get out there I'll be like oh no no <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I know what you mean yeah whereas I I I tend to not over plan I just kind of know what points I want to cover and yeah sometimes it goes very plain sailing sometimes like i'll get comments whilst i'm live and it will you know take me down another rabbit hole and yeah so now i always like have a few like bullet points on a post-it because i've got caught out so many times where i've like right this is exactly what i'm gonna say and then like you know i've answered some comments and it's taken me down a completely different route and i'm like 
oh my gosh, I've completely forgotten what else I wanted to tell you. And I've said that. And I'm like, I'm going to have to take notes from now on. So I know like I can bring myself back on because yeah, I was just going on like all these different side quests and yeah, like, yeah. So yeah, I just kind of have now like some very loose bullet points. So if I do go down on that tangent, I can bring myself back. Yeah, and like I said, coping mechanisms like that are so useful, but you don't know what ones you need until you've tried things and practiced. Things. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have three top tips that you could share for those of us who are looking to be more successful or more comfortable with showing um, up online for their business? yes yeah, so i would definitely say don't worry about it being perfect just go with it just start somewhere and you'll get into your own rhythm and you'll find confidence that way for sure i would say also as well when you share something from your story your beliefs your values you are standing out without having to be the loudest without having to dance point do some crazy trend that i really cannot stand um you are being louder than you think you are just because you are sharing your voice your values your opinions your thoughts and that will bring in your community and also repel the wrong people which is always a very good thing and top three so i would say yeah my third tip would be don't try to be absolutely everywhere online you don't have to be on every single social media platform i'm not i don't know like even how i would try and do that so i would pick one maybe two and just do it really really well and you'll be a lot more successful because you know you'll be building up a community a lot quicker because you won't be like spreading yourself so thin having to create all this endless content you can create content just for a particular platform as well and it can be any platform as well like people are everywhere these days you don't have to kind of think okay what platform are my audience on unless like you're going for the corporate people so corporate people more on linkedin you know the decision makers otherwise yeah if you're just um targeting like everyday people who you you know want to buy your jewelry then i would say just pick a platform that you actually enjoy using and enjoy being on because it's you that's got to use it so if you hate instagram that's absolutely fine if you love linkedin go for it like you will be able to build and find your community, your audience, your clients, wherever you decide. Yeah, that's so true. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Katie. That was really interesting. Can you let um, everybody know where they can find you online for more information about you? Yes, you can find me online. I am on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm at Business Wonderland and you can also check out my website and I'll give you the links kim so you can yeah we'll put those in the show notes yeah no yeah but just to clarify you're telling me that when this podcast comes out and we're going to share and promote that it's out you and i are not going to do a little dance <laughs> i'm i mean let me see what i can find for us <laughs> and we'll do some sort of like duets well, maybe because me and Kim actually live really close to one another as well. Maybe Kim, I'll drag you out to the park and we'll we'll, we'll film it in public as well. <laughs> okay, actually, to be fair, I might do that. I'm just not. <laughs> I'm just not going to do like a little dance in my kitchen or anything. Ah, oh, sad times. <laughs> but that's authentic to me. So. <laughs> yes, yes. And it, it, I wouldn't be authentic to myself if I was doing that either. I don't think I've ever danced in the park. <laughs> Although on local dog walks, I have seen people dancing and, and doing their recording bits in our local parks. So maybe I just need to sort of get in the back of shot of one of those one day. And <laughs> Yeah, just like jump in, like video bomb it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Thank you so much, Katie. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Kim. Bye.